Hello, well, welcome to another Talking To episode. I'm your host, Teddy, and today I'm being joined once again by... Hayden. And today we're going to be doing something different. We're going to be talking about the TMNT and Batman first crossover comic. And it's going to be pretty interesting with this whole video. Okay, so for the first question, which I do have to go straight into this one, just because I know, Hayden, you've not read any comics before. So what was it like reading this comic for the first time? Um... This comic was really quite interesting, and honestly, it was really it was really good to uh, good to read and watch. Um, yeah, this was just completely. I was not expecting any of it. I had no idea what this comic was going to be like. I was going in completely blind, and to the audience that are watching this episode when it comes out. I have actually never read like an actual comic before. I know that may sound kind of crazy, but this is like the first time I've actually sat down and read like a comic comic. So this is just all new territory for me. Um, but overall, this comic was really fun to um, to fun to read, and it was just interesting in how two different worlds, two different characters, or two different themes have somehow worked together really, really well and made this huge crossover, which I have never even seen or heard of. And to be honest, I didn't think it would work, but somehow it, it kind of does, which is kind of weird because Batman is like Batman. And of course, you've got the <laughs> turtles, which are just, you know, the turtles. And yeah, it was just a really weird concept, which turned out really, 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 really well. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, I do think that, like, when saying out loud is Batman and the Tim and T crossing over, it just sounds like it should not work just because, again, it's Batman and Turtles, but I do think they go around it in such a way that the whole story works, and I think this is possibly one of the best crossovers that Turtles have ever done, and I think it still holds up today. Um, okay, so going into the next bit, uh, so basically the artwork was a pretty big thing uh, for like, comics, and this artwork was done by Freddie Williams II. Uh, what do you think about the artwork for this uh, comic? To be honest, the artwork was amazing. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a bit different to what we usually do on the podcasts, where we watch the video and we talk about their graphics, but... This is very, very different because it's not a video, it's not got any moving components, it's just drawings on a page and I I gotta say it's really, really interesting and cool just to see a different perspective of this, of the Turtle universe and of course the, the comics and how they all work and I really did enjoy it. The comics have so much detail in which I was, I didn't even think was possible, like the amount of like textures the, the lighting that they use to portray the the turtles the batman suit and how they got all like the shadowing properly done and it was really really awesome to see and whoever did this comic spent a lot of time and effort into all the colors and the lighting and every shape and composition on the page and it's really cool and i really enjoyed it and i think it's very very nice to see different concepts, different art styles on the channel, and just to see the different interpretations of the turtles, and which is just, I find, awesome. Yeah, I think that with the artwork, it just works somehow. It has, like, a, I want to say, like, somewhat realistic vibe to it, but also at the same time, and I also think that it has somewhat of, like, a cartoony vibe as well, with the curse which the which other person used, because, because this might surprise you, there's actually multiple people working on this comic. You've got one person writing the comic, you had one person doing the artwork, and then, one, and then you've got another person doing the colours. So I just think for like getting all this people together and making this work is just... It, I, I don't know, it's hard to put into words, because it's somewhat speechless when you see the artwork and how it all falls together with everything like that. But I think the artwork is just amazing. But I do think that, like, in saying that, one thing which I do feel as though that people always really overlook is the colourist for these comics. And I think that the colorist for this uh, for, for, and this series just did an amazing job. Or like somewhat uh, realistic, somewhat cartoony. It just works so well. And and I mean, just uh, like the fact that, that and, and it's how to like carry the color scheme like throughout the whole like issue and not really have anything like dipping quality. It's just amazing. Um. So yeah. Um. Okay. So let's talk about the actual story itself. Um. So. Like, what did you think about the story? Because 
This story was like all original and brand new, and it's definitely something which you've never seen before. Well, at first I was really confused. I was super confused at the fact that the turtles were in this foreign place. Uh, they didn't know where they were, and they were talking about how they got there. And it was like very, very brief at the start. And I was trying to figure out what, what's, what's going on. Like, where are they? If they're not in New York, where could they possibly be? And it was really difficult for me to understand. But as I read on and on and on about it, it became much clearer. And of course, when, um, when of course, I saw the introduction of Batman, um, when he confronted the Turtles for the very first time, I was... To be honest, I was kind of weirded out by it, because it's it's Batman. Like he's a DC character, and you just you just wouldn't see him in in a Turtles thing. You know, it's just very foreign to me. Like I've seen the Turtles; they've worked with many many characters of like over these last couple of episodes, and seeing them how they interact with them. But this is Batman. Like I still can't get over the fact that Batman and the Turtles are working together, and this this thing seems very alien to me. It seems very foreign, and it just I don't know. Maybe it's just me who is thinking this is Batman. He's dark. He's gloomy. He's all about the pain and suffering. And of course, the turtles as the turtles as they are. Um, it's just a complete weird platform of characters, and it just it is interesting. Don't get me wrong. I have enjoyed it, but at it just really does mess with my mind just two <laughs> two worlds just I, I don't know i can't put it into words it's just super confusing yeah i mean i don't understand where you're coming from it's just like something which you do not expect to happen but yet it works so well and with the actual story itself i was really surprised uh, just because i've always enjoyed the story and i think that like even to this day after reading all the other crossovers they've done with Batman, Power Rangers, Ghostbusters, uh, Street Fighter now, like, this one still really holds up really well, and I should say that, like, even with this story as being, like, a crossover one, and even, like, a mini-series, the story itself just works so well, because you know what's going to happen, well, I, I wouldn't necessarily say, like, and, like, I wouldn't necessarily say, like, you don't know what's going to happen, but, like, you can, like, see things, like, in advance, like, what's going to happen with certain characters and stuff like that, but even with the story itself, with how it's uh, played out, out. It just works so well, and not just feels over like they're just doing it just because they have to, or because you know they're trying and trying to make toys out of it or anything. It feels over like it was like really planned out with how things are, and really feel like I want to say like a movie type way because even though this like kind of did get translated into the movie and the movie did like change quite a few things from this version, I will say that this it just feels over like it was all planned out, structured perfectly well, and. Yeah, there's not really too many bad things I can really say about it. Um, okay, so with that being said, um, was there any, like, standout moments for you? Yes, there was. I think this whole comic was a huge standout for me. <laughs> like, when I first saw Killer Croc in the sewers and seeing the, um, seeing the turtles interact with Killer Croc and his men, that was really interesting because first I thought it was Gatorhead. Gate Gatorhead? Yeah, Gatorhead, wasn't it? Or Do you mean Leatherhead? From um pre Leatherhead. Why did I say Gatorhead? Oh my <laughs> god. Excuse me. Leatherhead, thank you. Um yeah, because I thought it was Leatherhead at first, but then of course I figured out it was Killer Croc and he was awesome. His whole character, his whole persona was just awesome to see. And of course, when we get introduced to um who else? We've got we've got Killer Croc. Um, there was got Penguin. The, of course, Rachel Goo. Yes, Rachel Goo. That's the one. Rachel Goo. Rachel Goo or Rachel Goo? I'm sorry, Razal I'm butchering these names. It's, it's, it's all Razal Goo. Everyone gets his name Thank mixed you, up yeah. and confused. So say how it is. I, I, it's just terrible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and of course, seeing the Penguin as well and the Joker. That is, um, that was a big shock for me when I saw the Joker um, in the comics because you can't have a Batman movie without the Joker. Or sorry, you can't have anything with Batman without the Joker. They're like, they go hand in hand. You can't just have one or the other. They have to come as like a set package together. And so that was just really cool to see. And of course, 
Shredder in this in this comic was very different because he is a lot more bigger, he's a lot more stronger, and of course he he has this whole different vibe and perspective and of course he's about the empire making business and he loves to control stuff and his ambition his pride his greed gets the better of him and he just wants more and more and more and it's weird to see Ra- Rashal Ghul sorry if I'm butchering the name Rashal Ghul side with Shredder because they're from complete different worlds they've got complete different ideologies but Seeing them work together um, was very interesting because they both have their own empires and they both play the long game and they know how to run a criminal organization, a criminal syndicate. And it was really weird seeing two bright of the best villainous minds from both worlds combine forces with their armies, the Foot Ninja, the Foot Clang, and It was really, really weird and cool to see at the same time. So I really did enjoy those parts as well. And of course, I know we're going a bit further on, but I just got to say before I forget, with the mutations of everyone else, with Iceman, Ivy, the Penguin, the Joker, um, and just everyone in it was just super, super cool to see. Yeah, I mean, going off your point about the, uh, about Ra's al Ghul and Shredder, I think that just, it, it works so well, even though it shouldn't, it just works so well. And I think that most people would want the Joker just because it's the Joker, but at the same time, I think Ra's al Ghul was the perfect fit to team up with Shredder. And, yeah, it was just amazing. But I do think that the, like, the best standout moment for me was definitely, like, seeing all the mutation parts. Like, you can definitely, I mean, you can definitely see how creative that was out of gear. We turn Penguin into an actual penguin. Mr. Freeze into a polar bear. Uh, was it, like, a python from, uh, for Joker? A hyena for Harley Quinn? You could tell for that they got very creative and it, it was just so fun and so unique. Um, okay, so, with that being said, um, was there any, like, sort of, like, bad moments from the comic? Like, you didn't enjoy as much? Um, to be honest, there wasn't many bad things about the comics. However, I think... I'm not too sure, because, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed this comic very much so, and I didn't see many bad problems with it. It's just some... I think it's just me on my end. I, I think it's because it's the first time I'm reading a comic, and... It's just a bit different to what we're usually used to, but overall, I didn't have many bad things to say on this on this part of the episode, and it's just it's just very weird just seeing this whole thing play out, and I I think I just need to get used to it to be honest, because as as long as there's going to be stuff about the turtles, there's going to be comics, and of course. This is like my first time reading and studying an actual comic and it, I think it's just me where it's just really weird and it's very different to what we usually what we usually do here on the channel but it's it was re- really fun it was really interesting really good really fun and it was just really really creative how they did it and so yeah yeah, I've, I don't think that's really so many bad things to really say about this comic. I just think that, like, if I was to, like, go into, like, detail about each, about, like, each issue and each page and stuff like that, then I do think I'll just be, like, nitpicking at certain bits. Just because I think that, like, we're just, like, I mean, just because I think you do have to keep in mind that this actually happens, so you can't complain too much, and I don't think there's anything bad I can really say about it. I do think, like, maybe the only one thing which I would have liked to see a lot more in this issue, or, like, this whole crossover, was, like, interactions with, like, different kinds of characters. Just because I did enjoy the interactions that like, we did get in this, like, crossover. But at the same time, it feels to do like, maybe they could have, like, included, like, a few more Bat Family members just to include, like, Nightwing and Batgirl and include them interact with, like, the other Turtles. Or even have, like, unusual interactions with other characters. I just felt to do like, maybe there was, like, possibilities and potential there to, like, have more fun with certain aspects of the comic, but I do think that like for the actual crossover itself, you can't really complain too much just because it's Batman and the Turtles. Uh, but yeah, um, okay, so let's talk about some like key moments. Um, okay, so like the first one is uh, the Turtles fighting Batman for the first time. What do you think about that one? 
that was really interesting to see. Seeing Batman and the Turtles fight, it was it was very very weird because the Turtles and the Batman. First of all, one you would never actually see or believe it until it actually happened, and secondly, um, it was really interesting to see how Batman was using their fighting techniques to figure out who they were, like. A, like a detective, as they say in the in the um, in the comic, and it was really really in- interesting to see that as well. And of course, it was really cool to see Master Splinter and to see how he actually backflipped over Batman, and it actually showed you the different transitions of how of how Master Splinter did so. Uh, I found that really interesting because you don't usually get that in episodes or video clips as such. You just get like the finished. Um, finished version but this is just um cut over multiple uh, multiple images which is just really cool to see um it was really interesting to see as well like the um the fights with the turtles as well with batman and of course they only get better from here so i really did enjoy it and of course i have so much more to say with the other fight scenes that we will probably get um to go on to later in this podcast tonight yeah, I think that with the first fight scene, is it, I don't know, it's a really interesting one, just because I like it for, like, you can see the turtles fighting Batman and stuff like that, and I do think I like this lot of really cool and interesting moments, like Mikey going into a pizza, re- a pizza restaurant and telling everyone about Batman and stuff like that, and even seeing, like, the car, I think it was shocking uh, Raphael, I think it was. So I think, like, there's, like, a lot of really fun moments in this fight scene, but I don't know, I feel as though at the same time, because maybe it was in comic book form, it felt as though like, it was always holding back maybe, and I don't know, it, I mean like, I don't know, it's really interesting, because I love it because it is Batman fighting the turtles, but at the same time, I think that because it's comic book form, it was held back quite a bit, but I think there was like a lot of really great um, interactions and moments there. Um, okay, so yeah, for the next big fight scene uh, we had was the Turtles and Batman fighting the Shredder in, like, the docks area. Uh, what do you think about that fight scene? That was very interesting. Batman versus the Shredder. It was... To be honest, I can't describe it with the words that I have at me at, on me at the moment. It's just... It was so surreal. Seeing Batman and the Shredder fight... It, it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem right it's just you wouldn't have think it you wouldn't think of it until you actually see it like it's just really weird but i i really did enjoy it i liked how batman and the shredder uh fought together and uh not uh, not together sorry um against each other um but yeah i just really enjoyed it however i do have to say because it was in comic book format we didn't get to see more of the action um if you get what i mean like we didn't get to see um how they fought and how they did it because it was in like paper format but that's the only like drawback and the only bad thing that i have about this um this comic in general is just that we didn't get enough that i in my opinion we didn't get to see enough action because i'm i'm a very action person and i love my action and of course, I really did enjoy it, but I, I think there could have been more action in it. Yeah, I mean, I do agree with you on that. I, I think that, like, it's a really fun fight scene just to see the Turtles and Batman fighting with Shredder. And again, I don't really have anything else to really say other than it's just so amazing. But I think, like, going back to your point, I do think, like, it's understandable like, why you think that. And I do somewhat get annoyed by that with the action just because... I, I, I don't know, it's a really interesting thing and a hard thing to describe just because you know that like it's only drawing and stuff like that but when you do look at TV shows and what they're able to do with the fighting and stuff like that we're able to actually properly envision stuff and all that I think that's what's like drawing back this like cr- uh, this whole comic just because you want to like see more without without actually doing more I just feel through like if this was if this whole thing was animated and 
we, then like we would not be having any complaints about it. But I think that's like the only biggest complaint which I can also give about this fight scene as well. It was fun, great, and amazing. But it's so I, I don't say necessarily say like slow pace, but I think that because you're like reading the actual uh, like like and reading all, like, all the like speech bubbles and stuff like that before going on to the next uh, like uh, panel where and where like, and where do you get to see like, one of the characters actually like actually punch someone? I think that's maybe like what's like the pacing problem with all of it, but. Again, like it's nothing you again, like it's nothing which you can really do about it, but yeah, that sort of happened. And then uh, for the next one, which I feel as though is somewhat pretty interesting, uh, we do get to see Raphael more or less fights a Batman and basically tells him basically, you know, you're gonna like kill us all and stuff like that. And then Batman explains his origin story. Uh, what do you think about that scene? Because I found that to be interestingly weird and unique. Batman's origin story. Um, we, we're talking about the scene with Raphael in it. Yeah. Yes, because that was really heartfelt. I really did um, enjoy that scene because it was really um, heartfelt. Like I really did feel bad for Batman and how they presented it in a way that portrays Batman in this like somewhat vulnerable state, and he's opening up to Raphael about his past and letting down his guard even just for a brief moment was really really heartwarming for me and it was just super cool to see Raphael stand back and actually think about what he's actually said because he's he he offended well you can't offend Batman honestly you could throw any word at him and Batman would not be offended but just to see Raphael think and apologize and just realizing what he had said and how wrong he was about Batman, which was just really cool to see. And just seeing how both of them are vulnerable um, emotionally deep down inside is just it's just really, really cool to see. Because these are characters who are headstrong, stubborn, and they are like made of steel, but deep down they still got a soul and they are and they're still well, I say human. One of them is a mutant ninja turtle <laughs> um but yeah you understand where i'm coming from don't you yeah i mean i know it's a, it's a hard scene for me to, to really describe just because I, I like how it more or less like diverts batman but at the same time because it's the comic book batman and he's been around for like nearly 100 years or something like that it sort of feels like, like it's just weirdly placed in there I mean, I like that he is somewhat developing his character, you know, not to Raphael and stuff like that, but at the same time, it just feels like, in a way, they're trying to, like, more or less, like, explain Batman's origin and stuff like that, and it just feels also a little bit weirdly placed in there at the same time, but I think it works, but I don't know, I feel so, like, it could have been taken out and it could have been, like, still the, the, like, the exact same story. I think that makes sense because like it didn't really it's felt so weird to explain his origin for like the hundredth time stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I understand where you're coming from with that, but this for people such as myself, I found that really interesting because it gave us some insight and background knowledge. And of course, I understand I have I do know what Batman is and I have watched the Batman movies as such, but it was just really nice to see it in paper form and see it in a new perspective okay well i feel so that we should probably talk about the final fight scene like the big one with all the mutants batman fighting shredder turtles fighting rajal ghoul or was it like splinter using high quinn's uh, manner to like fight off all the mutants where do we even begin to start us off hayden <laughs> Oh, well, to be honest, I thought we was going to talk about the uh, the first interaction with Shredder and, of course, with the portal. Okay, yeah, but, yeah we'll talk about that. Yeah, uh, I just quickly wanted to state that I really did enjoy how Shredder was using Penguin's resources um, to build his criminal empire in the new world that he's going to conquer and how he's going to bring back his men and his resources to. I just found that really interesting. And of course, it just shows uh, Shredder's strategic mind mindset, which I really enjoyed as well. Um, do you have anything to say about that scene? Um, not really. Um, it was there. I enjoyed it. It's, it's Batman characters and tall characters. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, what do you think about the final fight scene? With right. all those bits there. <laughs> right, this... That was just crazy. Just to think that... Raj Al Ghul and the Shredder would actually go to Gotham Arkham Asylum to actually go there and recruit. Well, I, I say recruit, probably unwinningly recruit um, all the um, patients at Arkham Asylum um, for their mutated army. And of course, it was really, really cool to see. Like, like you said previously, Harley Quinn was a well, a, a cheater or some sort of lioness. Um, the Dr. Ice or Iceman was a polar bear and of course Ivy was this giant mutated um, plant and of course the Joker I, I really did like the Joker's um, appearance in this comic because he was a snake and of course I was thinking hold on a minute why a snake and then of course it links back to his character as he's been manip he is a manip uh, manipulator he's sneaky he's deceptive and that's literally what a snake is they are deceptive um they prey on the weak um the weakest of the food chain and they are very very manipulative um and of course that it just fits joker's characters really really well and it was just really cool to see how the mutations affected one another and just to see how dangerous and elevated these once wannabe criminals are now like um, Justice League threats, if you understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think like what the like the mutants they were just amazing. Just so I think like exp like showed off like the creative side I was able to get with all of uh, this whole thing, and it just works so well. Just not a bad thing I can really say about any of it. It just worked so well with all the mutants. In fact, the only thing which I, I was, I might say, like, negative thing is that I would have wished to see a little bit more of them. But at the same time, I feel so like, with what we did get to see with them, it was just enough. But at the same time, I feel so like there's potential to really, like, use them a lot more and make them into big threats and stuff like that. But I think it just worked so well. Uh, what do you think about, um, like, the, um, I'm going to see, like, Shredder versus Batman and Toes versus Ra's al Ghul. What do you think about those fight scenes? I really did enjoy the Batman and the Shredder fight um, with the new Intimidator suit, which Batman has developed. And of course, I um, I really did like how um, Shredder was using his tricks up his sleeve, such as the acid to burn through the um, the metal of the Intimidator suit, and to see how Batman was preparing himself to. Um, launch Shredder out the window, which I really did. I, I, I did laugh at that, and how Batman was thinking, "Ah, uh, like I'm going to die here," and he was tricking the Shredder into thinking he was vulnerable. And it turns out it was the other way around. That was really interesting and cool to find out and watch as well. Um, with Ragu and the Turtles, I really did enjoy that. Like, to be honest, I. The only problem was I was a di bit disappointed in there was not um, more fighting on Ragul's side. Um, like he didn't put, give, he didn't put up too much of a fight with the turtles. And like I know he was blocking the moves and he was tying them out, but it was very difficult to understand in like the comic book version in paper format. Um, but overall, I really did enjoy. Um, both fight scenes and of course seeing how the two fight against uh, different adversaries from different worlds that was really interesting just to sit back and think about um including i just gotta give a shout out to master splinter as well um him going out against all the um all the mutated um patients um however i really would have liked to see more of that in which Master Splinter was fighting against the patients from Arkham Asylum, like Harley, uh, Iceman, and the Joker. I would have really liked to see more of that. Yeah. I think that um, with what they did, it was it was just amazing to even see these interactions and just even see these fights. And I will say this, I think that with the movie, because they did that uh, this story 
I do think that the movie did do this, like these scenes better, but basically was able to explore fight scenes and actually make them cool. Even though the Batman and Shredder fight ones really amazing and great, it feels as though that it was a bit like held back because it was only like one panel at a time sort of thing. Whereas the animation stuff, it was able to actually fully explore that. And with the movie, which I think did also the Ra's al Ghul and Toes fight better, it was basically Ra's al Ghul versus uh, Leonardo Donto, and then whittled it down to Leonardo. And I think that like that did work a lot better just because it was able to be more of an actual fight. Whereas this one, it was just everyone, and then Ra's al Ghul was somewhat beating them, and then in the end, they just beat them, and yeah, it felt like like the fighting was all over the place with those two characters. But I think that, like. Overall, it just works so well just because it what it is and stuff like that. It was just, again, it's really hard to put into words just because it's amazing because it's these characters, but at the same time, with the way that the comic book format is, it's somewhat a bit annoying just because you're somewhat dealing with, like, the... Oh, oh no, I think it's a comic book format that just doesn't really work too well with telling these great stories, but at the same time, it's the only way to get these great stories, so... Yeah, it is what it is. So, yeah, um, what do you think about, like, this whole story overall? Um, overall, this story was really, really interesting. I really enjoyed it. Sure, at first, I was thinking, what is actually going on? Like, I have no clue what's going on. And then, of course, figuring out the story and really, and really getting into it, I then enjoyed it because it was, it was this whole new area that I well I of course haven't explored before and have no idea about this whole multiverse dimension stuff um in in this format before it was really really interesting and I really did enjoy this comic just because it was Batman and the turtles like yeah it's a weird combination <laughs> that somehow works and I know I keep repeating myself it, it, it's just because it does I have no other words to describe how this comic plays out it is just two different worlds in one and it just works somehow so well and i I've just got to say this um real quick i know we didn't explore this um earlier but i'm bringing it up now um i i gotta say i really did enjoy the scene where michelangelo offers um batman a slice of pizza <laughs> <laughs> that was I don't know why that was just super funny for me and it was just really interesting to think like oh Batman's this super tough guy and he doesn't do anything like that and of course just see him eat the pizza and and just interacting with the turtles on like a like a friendly level was it was really cool to see because Batman never lets his guard down especially to those who have just infiltrated his secret bat cave out of the blue and I just got to say this again. How did the turtles find the Batcave? Uh, it was more like, Splinter. Up, how um, he he found Batmobile home. I think I think it was. I don't know. It's, it's comics. What do you expect? I <laughs> uh, can't argue with that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think overall for me, it's, it's this is possibly still one of the best crossovers they've ever done. It still holds up to this day. And I think the only way to like really describe it is just I think the only way to really probably describe it. It's just by saying the title of it and just reads it all. Um, so, yeah, with that in mind, because I know this was your, your first comic and all that, are you interested in reading more comics now, uh, now that you've like, read this one? I am interested, yeah. I am interested to see what other creative people have got in store for this um, particular universe of the Turtles. And, of course, in, just in general, like it's it's opened up the world... Um, of comics to me and it's it's just an, another interesting way and perspective of how such great shows can be put into this format and can be enjoyed by everyone still and it's just another way of seeing um, what everyone loves yeah. and that just really opens up a new new perspective especially onto me which I really do enjoy so uh, yeah it's interesting. Okay, that's quite interesting. I mean, that being said, because I'm, I'm going off like that point, seeing how you enjoyed it with the tell stuff, like, which is also like getting interested in like reading like other comics from like like maybe like you know Marvel, DC, or other characters that maybe not part of the like the big two, like maybe like Invincible or Walking Dead or like something like that. Like, are you interested in like reading like more comics from like other things now? 
yeah. Okay. I am. I am interested. It like especially with other stuff like Marvel and The Walking Dead. Um, like The Walking Dead um, and Marvel seem really interesting topics to actually start going into comics. Um, um, going into comics, and it's crazy to think that I never actually read comics as a kid, and to think that I missed out on reading comics. And it's just a crazy thing just to even think about, because just growing up, I just never was interested in comics and until today, really. Just watching and reading the comic and just seeing a different perspective on how shows can be portrayed to people and still be enjoyed by everyone. Okay, that's uh, quite interesting. Um, okay, so should we move on to the, uh, the comments now? Let's do it. Okay, we'll like start us off with YouTube comments. Of course, let's have a look. Right, um, just a heads up to everyone watching this episode. I do apologise if I butcher your, your names. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to give you a heads up right now because <laughs> I am terrible at names. And yeah, so I'm just going to give you a heads up. So I do apologise in advance. Um, so let's see. Uh, Magma Straker 1436. I hope I got that name right. Um, he said, got to love this crossover, does some wonderful things with the characters for sure, especially with the mutant ones. Um, yeah, that is very, very good. Like, especially with the mutant ones, uh, yeah. Magma. <laughs> I, I gotta say, I really did enjoy, like, the mutations of Harley Quinn, um, Iceman, and of course, Ivy, and, and the Joker, of course. That was, that was really interesting to see. Like, a mutagen in this universe could be devastation across Gotham and the world for like the justice league in general and it just brings a whole new playing field to all the heroes and supervillains, which i which is really interesting and it kind of piques my interest <laughs> imagine if they are mutated and the justice league go against them and it's it's a whole other can of worms to open up and i don't know if we're gonna have time <laughs> to uh, talk about it but we'll moving talk on. about it some other time but <laughs> moving on yes thank you <laughs> moving on um Green Bean XP says, I love this crossover. Yes, as everyone um, probably does, um, everyone loves this crossover. And to be honest, I, I do like this crossover too. And it's really, really interesting. A oh, little um, fun fact about that person, uh, they're actually one of the voice actors working with me on like m motion comics. So yeah. Oh, really? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Go on, Green Bean. <laughs> well, welcome. Um, anyways, um, TM, TMN Theory says, love it, okay, no, no, nothing to shout out there for, um, Bureau Walker 9820 said, I liked it, the animated movie was pretty good too, um, yeah, I, I liked it as well, I haven't seen the animated version of this, so I, I can't give any comments, sadly, so, yeah, um, four kids at TMT 2003. I would rather love to, to ah, excuse me. I'd rather, I would rather love to if it would have been the used in Mirage Turtles and original Batman comics. Um, um, are the, yeah, Mirage, are the Mirage Turtles are the original uh, Turtle comic, uh, the original Turtles. <laughs> I feel that right, the original Turtles. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah, the I like I said, I have no clue. There's bound to be hundreds of dozens of turtles that I've yet to like see or discover here so I can't really comment on this as such so I'm gonna move on sadly um Peyton Stevenson 6203 uh Kawabunga yeah <laughs> yeah well Kawabunga yeah I, I can't I can't argue with that Kawabunga yeah <laughs> Was that yeah, but that's all the YouTube comments. Uh, yeah, that's all the comments on the YouTube page. Um, what have we got on your front, Teddy? Oh, crap, there's a lot. Um, okay, so Shellhead72, they put, loved it. Uh, I still think it's the strongest of the three. And yeah, there are two more after this, uh, set in this like, timeline and all that. And they go downhill from there, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, K24CK, they put, enjoyed all three, though the first one is the best. 
uh, Gary Fast, I know I said it wrong, sorry, they put it honestly, I loved it. The art, the storytelling, all three were fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Comfortable Dusty 8284, uh, they put, I got the first volume and can't wait to start it. Well, if, if you haven't started it, why are you commenting on, on this post? <laughs> Uh, Goldbond, they put, the first one is really good, and I like the second one, and the third one was acceptable. Yeah, the less said about that one, the better. Uh, Holson Steve, they put, uh, I haven't seen it besides a few clips, and what I saw seems pretty good, uh, but, I thought it did a pop, uh, but I thought it did pop up in my head. Would there was a Timothy crossover with Marvel characters as well, and then after that, there could be a free station crossover. Oh god, no. Um. Oh god! Yeah. What's what's going on? What's what's? It wants what's to cross the wants to cross over with Marvel, uh, DC, and the Turtles. Oh, that is a that is a big one. That will never happen. <laughs> uh, New Face Fever. They put a uh, best one to three. For my money, not as good as the crossover with the Power Rangers though. I would actually argue against that and say that this one was was better Wait, than the Power Rangers. Power Rangers. Oh yeah, they've done uh, two um, crossovers. They got pretty interesting. Uh, do you want me to say like some of the gimmicks which I have in that one, or do you want to wait till we get to it, like in a few years or something? Uh, I, I don't know. You can say it now if you'd like to. I, I will probably uh, not be able to remember because there was so much information. <laughs> well, in the first crossover, we had the turtles becoming Power Rangers and the Shredder becoming Green Power Ranger Shredder, fighting in a giant metal head as a Megazord. Y yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? I, I'm i sorry, you, you lost me at the Ninja Turtles with a cup turned into Power Rangers. Yeah. That was just like, what? Oh, it gets even better because in the first, and because, because in the second Power Ranger one, the Power Rangers got mutated into dinosaurs. Uh, okay. <laughs> I haven't heard of that version of the Power Rangers before. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, continue on. Uh, we've got Nin uh, Ninroid uh, fan editor. They put literal peak fiction. Yeah, I can't argue with that. Uh, Shinobi Pizza. They put one of the best, and I mean best comic books I've ever read. It's in the top five Timothy uh, stories of all time. It's just too bad uh, that the following Batman and Timothy crossovers went downhill. Batman and Timothy Adventures and Batman uh, Two were particularly awful, and the movie was and uh, um, was still pretty good. Uh, was still woefully inferior to a comic. No, I will say this: the adventure one, which was uh, the it, uh, it was the Batman from like the Justice League cartoon, teaming up with the Twenty Twelve Turtles. That crossover was actually really good. Um, but I do continue on to say, uh, but, um, I do continue on to say, by the first comic, one of the best stories I've ever read in my life. Period. It was so fun yet filled with heart. Every character, character station, both from Team and Team Batman side, were, to uh, were totally right. It was just too marvelous. And yeah, and then do go on to say, Rip Kim Conway. And yeah, rest in peace, Ken, Ken Roy. Uh, side steps, but uh, no, I said it wrong. They put it was awesome. Alarm message, uh, 115. They put perfect. No tomorrow, uh, no tomorrow, 8,150. 8, they put I think it should happen more often. I, I do. I wish it would happen more often, but at the same time, I think that they've done enough, and this one's just too perfect that you just can't top it. Uh, fabulous brief. Uh, 4569, they put, I've been waiting for the Omnibus to come out, out forever, and yeah, that's finally coming out next month, I want to say, so that's good. Uh, Bass, uh, Bass M Messiah, they put good. Uh, Picture Chump, they put, it was awesome. Uh, the Nerd is Frog, they put, I got a trade of it and the movie and love both. The cheap opening eight uh, eight five eight one. They put love it. They need to do live action movie of this, and yes, they need to. Uh, Adventurous Linux uh, one four eight. They put love this one. Uh, Grimmer two six. They put loved it. I would also like to do. Uh, um, oh God, whatever. Um, would also like to Batman Timothy Gargoyle someday. Yeah, um, not uh, not so sound official. They put it should have been Daredevil. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Poop Break six six six. They put loved it. Loved the entire trilogy. My childhood favorite. Uh, oh god. Um. Oh god. Oh. Um. My childhood favorites together with fun story and amazing artwork. Uh, Rancid Tantra. They put perfect. 
Big MH, they put uh, read it recently and found it pretty enjoyable. You can feel the author's enthusiasm for both franchises. It was impressed. Um, I was impressed and we, um, oh god, oh, oh god. <laughs> I was impressed with the degree of emotions connection they were able to create between the uh, between the turtles and Bruce. <sighs> so yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So I think overall the opinion is is that everyone loves this and thinks it's possibly the best one so far. So I think like that's I'll like say that you started off on a really good strong note with the comics. <laughs> um. So yeah. Do anything else left to say or it's all done with this one? To be honest, I think I've said all that I've needed to say for this comic. Um, to be honest, I, all I gotta take from this is that I really enjoyed it, and it's um, a really nice, interesting concept to get into. And like you said, I think I this is a great comic for me to get into because it's it's just very different to what I'm used to. And of course, it's Batman and the Turtles. Like, what that other combination <laughs> do you need? He says it all. Yeah, I mean, I think that it was just amazing. Um, okay, so for next week's one, we're going to be starting Season 2 of the 2012 show, and that's going to be pretty interesting. Now, the first episode is called Mutation, St uh, M Mutation Station, I think it's called? Uh, no, um, what was it? Uh, Mutation Situation, I think it's called. I'm pretty sure, and let me quickly just double check, but I'm pretty sure it was called uh, that. It was like Mutation Situation. Uh, let me quickly check. I hope it was. Um, first episode is mutation situation. That's it. So, what do you think is going to happen in that episode? Um, to be honest, I think we're going to go straight into um the last um. The, oh, excuse me. Sorry, just trying to remember from 2012 and 2003. <laughs> they're all trying to merge together in my head. So. I think we're going to go straight into the action where the giant Krang vessel is above New York and the Turtles are trying to figure out what the hell to do next. That's what I'm thinking of and it's going to go straight from there. Apart from that, I have got no clue. That is uh, a very interesting thing. Just really out there in terms of what's going to happen. That's uh, pretty interesting. Um, okay, so yeah, um, so yeah, if you don't go into the podcast, you can leave a comment on the YouTube page. Uh, you can leave one on Reddit. You can leave one on Facebook. You can leave one on Anchor, either through text message or a voice message. But uh, yeah, I've been your host, Teddy. And I've been Hayden. And we'll see you all soon. Goodbye, yo. Bye. Bye.